Hi, I'm Felicity, and this is Lucy. We're doing snack size today. Let's get into it. Okay, so starting straight off today in a high lunge position, bring our right foot forwards, knee bent at 90 degrees. Your left knee should be directly underneath your hip. I want you to interlace your fingers together, place your hands behind the base of the skull, thumbs down the back of the neck, gently pulling on the back of the skull so that you can feel space in the back of the neck, soften the ribs, imagine air in your hips and feel how your TA naturally connects. Now drive a little bit through that right heel, you should feel your right glute connecting and we're going to make sure that the left glute is activated now as we rotate the thigh bone and sweep the left foot across the midline of the body and then all the way back to parallel that. So Lucy, let's do nine more. So breathing through it, whatever breathing comes naturally to you is fine. Go at your own pace. We're gonna go seven more and six, five, four, three. You should really be feeling it right in the fold of the glute. And one last one, keep the foot there. We're now going to peel the right foot off the floor like a little spring and place it back down. So we're challenging that left glute connection here and also working abdominals a little more. Okay, for another eight and seven. So instead of thinking I'm trying to hitch my front leg up, you're getting that power from underneath the foot using momentum and getting that glute on the right side activated to help you spring off and feeling this connect as a byproduct of that. Four more. And three, two, and one. Good, sweep that left foot back to parallel. That's it, Lucy. Okay, we can either keep our hands here or if you need extra support for the balance, we're gonna bring the arms up to the ceiling. So Lucy, you can bring the arms up and we're gonna drape over the front leg into a nice hamstring stretch. That's it, and you can put your hands down now as you come forwards, unfurl the spine into a nice hip flexor stretch. So we're tucking our tailbone here. We can still feel the abdominals connected. Great, let's go to faster pace now. Forwards and backwards with the body. Good, eight more. And seven, so it's more challenging to keep the hands behind the head because you have to use your obliques and abdominals a lot more. That's it. Feel the challenge, Lucy? Yes. Good, six. And five. Pressing down through your left foot so you can feel the left glute stabilizing and supporting you. And when you're going back into that hamstring stretch, really press through that front heel. Feel how your sit bones are gliding away from each other, allowing the fold in the front of the hips. Good. And four. Three. Just keep breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Two. And one last one. Good, straight into second side. So bring that right foot underneath, that's it. And bring the left foot in front, make sure it's 90 degrees, drive through that heel, feel the glute, and then sweeping the right foot across and back to neutral, that's it. Yeah, good Lucy, eight more. And seven, six, five. If you're just feeling this, work your hamstring, make sure you're not lifting the foot off the floor. Keep it gently like sliding along the floor so it's more into the glute. And three, you can take, take my counting loosely. Two, and one last one. Good, keep the foot across. And now springing that front foot, 10. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, good, okay. Bring that leg back to parallel and either arms are going up or staying behind your head, drape forwards into that hamstring stretch, drive down through that left heel, heel as we unfold the spine going forwards, good. In your own speed, go as slow as you need to keep the balance, to keep all the right connections. And seven. Six. Five, four, three. Remember to drive down through the right foot so you can feel that right glute stabilizing the whole time. And one last one. 
Great, into four point kneel position. So bring that left knee underneath, bring the hands down in front of you. Good, hovering over the floor as if it's ice. Pressure through the index finger, your pointing finger, and rotating out through the shoulders with your sternum gliding forwards. Make sure the TA is connected by thinking about the very tip of your tailbone slightly tucking. It's not a big tilt. You should still feel soft in your ribs. We're gonna tuck the toes underneath here and hover the knees off. That's our knee hover position. You can either stay here or challenge yourself more by lifting the hips up towards the ceiling in sort of a downward dog position, but the knees are staying bent. And then go back to your four point kneel and hover, that's it. Okay, nine more. Nine. And returning. And eight. So make sure you're driving through the heels of the palms so that you can feel your sternum gliding away from the hands and you feel the front of the shoulder girdle engaging. And six. If you're not feeling your lower abdominals, think of that tip of tailbone tuck again. Five. Four. Three. Good work, Lucy. Two. And one last one. Good, and lower the knees down, well done. From here, we're gonna slide the right foot back until the leg is straight, making sure you don't shift all the way over onto your left side. So if you press down through your left knee a little bit, through your left shin, you can feel how that glute engages on the supporting side. Now float the right leg up, just to hip high. We're not going for a high leg. Good, repeating what we did at the start. We're gonna sweep that bottom foot across the midline and back to neutral, good. Nine more, feeling it right in that deep rotator. You should still feel the right glute working as well. So think of that sit bone to heel connection. And six. Keep that float through the sternum. Make sure we're not locking off the elbows. The elbow should be long, but soft. Four. Three. Two. And one. Keep the foot there. And we're gliding over that left leg to the side, that's it, and coming back to that same position, good. So to your left, and then back to your center, challenging that lower glute connection. Let's do eight more, and seven, six, five, four, three, floating out of the shoulders there, two, that looks better, Lucy, and one last one. Good, now going backwards and forwards. So if you're finding it too challenging, keeping that back leg up, you can place the foot down and you're just sliding through the ankle. So Lucy, try doing that, put your foot down. And as you go backwards, you just fold through the front of the ankle, that's it. Yep. The most important thing is to feel it through that supporting glute and keep your right glute engaged. So if you're feeling like it's challenging your shoulders too much to keep the leg up, I want you to do this. And three more. Imagine the head staying where it is in space as you hinge back. Keep all the vertebrae spreading, no tension. And one last one. Good, and now hover that leg up and we're going into hamstring pulse. Flex the foot and pulse in, in and straighten. So into the backside, in and straighten, feeling hamstring and glute working and straighten. Eight, seven, floating up and out of that left hip a bit more. And five, four, three, two, and one. And now hamstring press. Imagine there's a dinner plate on your foot pressing up and down. Really feeling that hamstring. And Lucy, just keeping that support through here. That's it. You don't want to feel any discomfort in your lower back. So the pelvis does move as the leg is coming up. It has to. But if you're thinking about the tip of the tailbone slightly tucking, you'll keep that TA engagement and you're not gonna feel any discomfort in your lower back. Three more, two, and last one. Well done, and lower the leg down. Great, we'll go straight onto the second side. Yep, and floating that top leg up if we want to. Sweeping the bottom foot and back to neutral, good. Nine more, eight. Seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, good control there, Lucy. Last one, keep the leg there and hinging over the right leg and then back to the center, well done. Nine more. And eight. Seven. Six. If you're feeling any tension in those upper traps, just imagine you have giant wings open out to the side. So we're expansive in the front and the back of the shoulder girdle. And three more. Keeping the energy through the palms. And last one. Good, now going backwards and forwards. Remember, imagine the head staying where it is as you hinge backwards. Keep the vertebrae separating. Keep hovering out of the supporting hip. And six more. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one last one. Good, into hamstring pulse. So flexing that foot and pulse into the backside and straight in, 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 and straight in, that's it. Eight. And seven, in, straighten. Six, always resisting as you straighten. Five, pointing the foot as you straighten. Four, three, in, straighten. Two, in, straighten. Last one, in, straighten. Good, bend the knee 90 degrees, balance the dinner plate, pressing up 10. And nine, try and get that back leg as parallel as possible. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, bring the leg down. Okay, and let's just go into a child's pose stretch and we'll finish there for today. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.